How long will my batteries last? That's a question that virtually every droid builder asks themselves, and frustratingly, the answer is, it depends. What our droids are doing at any given moment determines how much charge is being withdrawn from our batteries. Is he stationary with nothing going on but blinking LEDs? The batteries could very well last days. Or is he driving around on carpet, flapping panels, and screaming at the top of his lungs? Keep that up and the batteries will be dead in a matter of hours. So, with runtime that can range from hours to days, how can we accurately know the current charge state of our batteries? A lot of operators observe battery voltage. However, as I'll discuss, voltage alone doesn't really provide a very detailed snapshot of the current state of modern lithium batteries. And the need to open a door or a body panel to check the voltage can be disruptive when you're on-site at an event. So is there a better alternative? I hope the answer lies here. This is a battery shunt made by Victron. But this isn't just any shunt, it's a smart shunt. What does that mean? How does it work? And most of all, can it provide a better answer than it depends to the question of how long will my batteries last? Let's find out. All batteries, regardless of type, output maximum voltage at full charge and zero voltage when fully discharged, which of course means that the voltage drops while the battery is being discharged. Thank you, Captain Obvious. However, this voltage drop is quite different for different types of batteries. Notice in this comparison, lead-acid batteries have a much more consistent, almost linear drop in voltage over their entire discharge cycle, whereas newer lithium-based batteries hold a much higher voltage until they get as low as 10 to 15% of their capacity, at which point the voltage drops off sharply. Now, I will admit that there are several other factors that come into play here, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Suffice it to say that once you factor in things like variable current draws, safe discharge limits, and even the ambient temperature, the fact that lithium batteries are designed to provide a consistent voltage for a much longer time when compared to lead-acid batteries is what makes relying on voltage alone unreliable for really knowing how close to the end of the curve you really are. So, that brings us to the shunt. Now, the way a shunt works is that it monitors the current that flows both into and out of a battery. In this sense, it's kind of like an accountant that tracks in real time every milliamp that comes and goes. As long as it knows the total capacity in amp hours and is synchronized with the full charge state of your battery, the shunt should be able to provide a real-time measure of your battery's remaining capacity. After all, capacity is really what we care about. Voltage is a measure of power. Amp hours is a measure of capacity. Knowing how much capacity our battery has left is much more useful than knowing how much power it's currently producing. And with this particular shunt, as an added bonus, I can use a mobile phone app to connect via Bluetooth to the shunt and monitor the state of my batteries, hence the smart shunt. I can even set an alarm if I want to, to notify me when the charge state has hit a user-defined threshold. So there's no more need to open up R2 to check the voltage meters. So let's take a look and see what we get with our shunt. There really isn't a whole lot that comes in the box. Uh, in addition to the shunt itself, uh, you get two fused positive leads. Those are used uh, in various configurations to monitor the state of the battery. Uh, and then you also get a quick start guide here, um, which has some safety information and your general hookup diagrams. Um, the diagram that we're most interested in is uh, monitoring a bank of batteries since I have two batteries connected in series. I'll connect one of the fused leads to the battery positive and then one to the midpoint, uh, which would be basically the other positive terminal. So these leads here, um, I will definitely want to use them since they're fused, but they're a lot longer than I need. So uh, once I decide where everything is going to go, uh, I'm going to uh, trim those down and re-terminate the ends. So um, taking a look at the connection diagram uh, and see how that's going to impact my battery wiring. Uh, here I've taken the battery and the harness out um, and it's really not going to be that difficult. Essentially I'm going to want to take this negative lead and instead of routing it directly to the connector that goes to my electronics board, I'm going to want to route that through the shunt itself. And then I'm also going to want to branch a uh, one of the fuse leads off of the battery positive, which I will probably um, snip off this connector here that is my regeneration lines, and I will just add the third wire in there. 
And then I'm also going to want to um, to add the second fused uh, what, to fuse lead here. And for that, I will uh, replace this yellow connector with my little split one here, and then uh, just connect the lead into there. So let's go ahead and give that a try. All right, so here is the revised wiring harness. Uh, it looks a little bit messy, but uh, it's actually really not all that bad. Um, so in terms of the modifications that I made, uh, you'll see that the battery negative lead, instead of going directly to the connection to the electronics board, now is sent to the battery end of the shunt, and then the system end of the shunt is what passes the negative through to the rest of the system. Uh, likewise, I've now branched the two leads, positive leads, one off of the battery midpoint, and then one off of the main battery positive terminal. And these two get routed uh, into ferrule connectors that I've connected to the aux and the VBAT. And you can see there the Bluetooth um, uh, indicator there is flashing, so it's ready to pair. Um, I did design this uh, bracket for the shunt. Uh, rather than bolt this to either the body or uh, the floor of R2 and then have to deal with uh, nuts in various places I might not be able to get to, I decided in, instead uh, to tilt the shunt on its side to make connections a little bit easier. Um, and uh, I intend to just glue this bracket down, epoxy it out, down into the floor of R2. Um, I will probably also um, make a version that does have hardware mounting holes on the bottom as well, um, and I'll make these available on my printables page. I'll put the link in the description, um, but it's really pretty straightforward. Um, so this should allow me then to just drop this right into R2 and then configure the mobile app. So right away we see that it finds the smart shunt on our network. We'll go ahead and select it to connect. Now the default pin code for the shunt is six zeros. <laughs> and it's probably going to prompt me to, yeah, to update the firmware which I will do now. All right, firmware update is complete. Let's reconnect. Now it drops us off at the screen here and it's showing us a 100% state of charge and it's going to warn me that uh, I haven't reset the pin, which I will do later. Uh, but this is not actually correct because this is showing the default settings for the battery and uh, I haven't yet set that up. So what I'm going to do is tap on the settings and uh, under the battery settings we're going to set our amp hours to we actually have a total of 10 amp hours in our configuration. And we actually are using the aux input, so we need to specify that it's the midpoint. Uh, now if we go into the battery details, you can see all of the various settings that you can have. Uh, the charged voltage, uh, 26.4. I'm actually reading, I think, 27.2 when it's fully charged. So I'm going to uh, update that. Because I want this to have a good snapshot of what a fully charged battery is. Uh, the discharge floor, this is by default set to 50%. That's for lead acid batteries. You don't want to discharge them more than 50%. But we've got the lithium ion batteries. Uh, we can actually discharge that a lot farther. Um, you can set it as, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20%. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set it to 20% to start. Um, the the Pukert exponent. Um, that, I think, should be set to 1.05 for uh, lithium batteries. Um, the charge efficiency factor, uh, this actually can be set to, uh, I think Victron recommends 99% for lithium batteries. 
um, and then everything else I think is pretty much ready to go. We are going to go ahead and synchronize the state of charge to 100% because we know that our batteries are completely topped off. So go ahead and synchronize. And when that is done, go back out here and close out. Uh, now we're reading our voltage as 27.6. It's actually a little higher than I thought. But as you can tell, we don't have any load on our battery right now. So we're not reading any current uh, or any consumption. Um, so let's go ahead and get this installed in R2 and turn them on and see some live data. All right, so let's see. We've got R2 out and about. Um, and with him just standing still and idling, you see he's only drawing about a third of an amp. Really not a whole lot is happening. Uh, the time remaining uh, is kind of a ballpark. It's basically giving you an instantaneous reading. So, you know, that's going to vary dramatically. But really what we're concerned with is the uh, state of charge. Um, that's the total capacity of our battery. And uh, if you watch the current, as I do things like turn the dome motor, for instance, you'll see that the power draw instantaneously increases uh, to reflect that. But the real difference is when I start driving. So you'll see right away, I'm immediately drawing in the neighborhood of four or five amps. And that's the thing that is really going to, to affect your battery life is is how often you're driving so uh, it's looking like this is going to work pretty well uh, let me get a sense to see what kind of range we get on the bluetooth we let r2 drive it's still still got a connection So I think this is going to work out really well. Um, it's giving us an instantaneous real-time reading of our current battery capacity. We don't have to stop and uh, open up R2 in order to check voltage. Um, I think this is going to work out really well. All right, so what are my final thoughts? Well, to be sure, the shunt is not cheap. It runs about $130 but I really appreciate both the information and the peace of mind that it provides. Knowing that it'll send an alarm notification to my phone when the battery hits my preset discharge limit gives me one less thing to worry about when I'm out operating R2. Our next big test is only two weeks away. We're going to be attending the 2022 Air and Scare event at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum in Chantilly, Virginia on Saturday, October 29th. We'll be there along with other builders from the Mid-Atlantic Droid and Prop Builders Group. This is going to be a full-day event, and I'm kind of anxious to see what sort of battery performance I get over an extended period of time. So uh, keep your eyes open for a follow-up video and a full report on that event, as well as some other Halloween festivities. Uh, I guess that's it, so thanks for watching, and happy building!